Well, all right, listen up, Call of Duty fanboys, first-person shooter enthusiasts, and people have way too much money to spend on video games. If you want to survive on the battlefield, you're going to need to subscribe to my channel right now and watch this video front to back. Today, I'm taking you to boot camp, and I'm going to learn you how to survive in Call of Duty World War II. <laughs> World War II is a pretty severe departure from a lot of previous Call of Duty games. The only COD I haven't played is Infinite Warfare, for obvious reasons, and I have to say, everything from the hub to the class sets and especially the gameplay have gotten an interesting overhaul. Typical class sets still exist, each with the option to pick a specific division now. Each division has its own perks and drawbacks. When you first pick your division, don't worry, it's not permanent, you can change your division by assigning them to each individual class set however you like. So I guess I should probably cover each division. The first division is the Infantry, which is your basic all-around class set. The main thing about it that separates this division from the others is the charge that you can perform with your bayonet to pick off soldiers at close range. This is the first one I picked when I started out, and here's what the game has to say about it. I'm Captain John P. Andrews, and I'm here to recruit you to the U.S. Army Infantry. As infantrymen, you will experience more combat than any other branch in our multinational force. You will be the tip of the spear. For that reason, you'll receive individual skills training and be made fit to fight. The instruction you'll receive emphasizes individual rifle marksmanship and hand-to-hand -hand combat, so you will be able to engage the enemy at any range. At longer engagement distances, you will rely on your skills as infantry riflemen to destroy the enemy. Up close, you will receive instructions on how to fight with the bayonet. Sweat in training saves blood in battle. As long as you have your brothers in arms and your rifle, you are unstoppable. And if something tries to stop you, show them what a bayonet can do to anything in the way. Let's get to work. The second division is known as Airborne, which is labeled as the Rapid Deployment Division. This one specializes in submachine guns, and the default class that uses this one features a suppressor for your primary. I'm not entirely sure what makes this the Airborne Division, but I'm sure somebody will angrily explain it to me like I should already know it even though the game literally just came out. You're a noob. And yeah, no one likes this. It sucks. Welcome to the Airborne. We are the most well-trained, physically fit, and battle-ready unit in the U.S. Army. Being a Sky Soldier requires peak physical fitness, mental and emotional toughness, and unhesitating courage. It doesn't get any more dangerous than this. We're the first in the fight, and we're the last thing opposition wants to see. We are hunters from the sky. If you think you've got the guts, then gear up, get on board, and let's go kick some Axis ass. Next up, we've got the Armored Division, which favors a heavy focus on machine guns and rocket launchers. This class is for people who really like to tear shit up in the middle of the battlefield with less of a focus on speed and more of a focus on firepower. I suck at using it, but I've never been an LMG guy for multiplayer, so yeah. Oh yeah, and now would probably be a good time to bring up that rocket launchers are basically useless for killing people on the ground. Check out the game's description of this one. Pay close attention. The sooner we get the introductions out of the way, the sooner we can get to blowing things up. My name is Major James Parks of the Royal British Armoured Division. Our armoured forces have one mission, and one mission only. Engage and destroy the enemy. We specialise in direct combat with opposing armoured forces, strong points, and fighting positions. And we're also frequently called upon to provide for direct fire support for our comrades in the infantry. A weapon that is issued in our branch down to the squad level is the light machine gun. As a member of the armoured division, it will be your duty to clear the way for our brothers in arms. If we don't do our job, then they can't do theirs. We fight for king and country, but most of all, we fight for each other. It is an honor to be armored. Never forget that. Now, let's get started, shall we? Then we have the Long Range Mountain Division, which basically is just a sniper class. This division is more so for the advanced players looking for an edge in camping and sniping down enemies from afar. To make this one work, you're going to need to know the lay of the land in most maps before you can effectively use it. There's not much that's special about this one other than the fact that it's your typical sniper class. To cover! Welcome, soldiers. 
to the Canadian Mountain Division, the most elite unit in the entire Allied Armed Forces. If you want to run headlong into access strongholds, try the infantry. But if you want to make your shot count, then we have a place for you. You are the eyes of the unit. You take in everything. The whole world lives between your crosshairs. Find your vantage point and execute the mission. They can't hear us, they can't see us. By the time they detect us, it's too late. If you have a keen eye and a steady hand, if you have the patience to wait for the perfect shot, if you can quiet the world around you and do what needs to be done, then look nowhere else but the Mountain Division. Lastly but not leastly, we have the Expeditionary Division, which essentially grants you full access to rushing your enemies with a shotgun and blowing them away on the front lines. And dying. Lots of dying. But your shotgun comes loaded up with some incendiary ammo, so that's something. Down. Enemy the wind. I was gonna give this one some hate, but then I gave it a second try and actually kinda like it. Attention! Welcome to the Resistance. We do not have the luxury of time as our enemies are closing in. So I will be brief. We are the pioneers of a new expeditionary force, specializing in sabotage and covert operations. We operate by night, raiding supply points for weapons and explosives, including the incendiary shotgun shells that spark flames, creating a hailstorm of fire that consume our enemies. If you want to join us, you must be willing to sacrifice everything for the good of your countrymen. We are the French Expeditionary Force. We are the fire that will burn down the Axis Empire to the ground. Vive la Résistance! Vive la France! It's funny that this division is French considering that the French are usually the ones to surrender rather than straight up rushing. Too soon? We. Oui. So now that we have the divisions out of the way, let's talk about the actual classes. Everything here should look pretty familiar to you except for this ribbon thing. This is like your main perk and it allows you certain advantages in the battlefield. My favorite one so far is the perk in the mountain class that allows your screen to glow when someone's aiming at you that's off screen. Much useful, such wow. Let's talk about the hub area. From here you can grab in-game currency from the mail to buy certain things such as orders that are on an in-game timer and reward you for completing them. And contracts. Hello soldier, I'm Corporal Green with the first Quartermaster Company. Need some new field gear? I've got you covered. Okay. So now that she's done talking, she's probably just gonna stand there and creepily stare at me until I leave the menu. Yep. Alright. So the contracts I was talking about, they're basically like orders. Literally, I really cannot tell the difference. Both give you options for XP, more currency, or supply drops, and they're both on timers, so I literally just don't know why they're two different things. Oh yeah, and there's a shooting range. The tutorials when you first start playing give you a basic idea of how everything works, but I feel like they spend way too much time explaining to me things that I could figure out on my own, but not nearly enough time explaining to me things that I couldn't. I mean, just look at how long it took me to figure out how to equip a new basic training. I tried everything I could, and I still couldn't figure it out. I never even did! I just got frustrated, entered a public match, and when I came back to the hub, the objective was gone. So, whatever. But enough about all this intricate bullshit about how the game works. Let's talk about what we all really want to know. Is the multiplayer good? Well, so far, I believe that, drum roll please. Yeah, is good. So why does my opinion matter, you may find yourself wondering. Well, I consider myself to be a pretty big fan of Treyarch's Black Ops series, <coughs> 30 something days of total playtime. <coughs> And even I admit that Black Ops 3 multiplayer is underwhelming at best. It just isn't the same in terms of quality when stacked up to the previous entries. Multiplayer in this game feels pretty familiar, but in a good way. The controls are fluid as hell, the visuals look pretty sexy, dying, while sometimes bullshit, mostly feels fair. The spawn killing is non-existent, at least from what I've played, and the maps are pretty cool and varied in scenery, enough to the point where each map feels like it has different strengths for different divisions. Is my opinion going to change? Well, we'll see. It's still super early in the game's life cycle to know for sure, and I'm still a really low level. The extra stuff like contracts and orders and all that crap, while a bit complicated, aren't necessary while playing the game. 
They merely help you get cool extras and level up faster. The HUD on your screen never gets in the way, and the score streaks are pretty awesome, yet familiar from what I've seen so far. The only downside I've really seen from my first few hours of playing is some lag here and there, some bugs on the main menu, and that, you know, the fact that this is the 8th Call of Duty to come out based on World War II. <laughs> wow, is it really 8? <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, I recommend picking up this game either for Christmas or whenever you got the funds for it based on the multiplayer alone. Keep in mind, I still haven't finished my complete analysis for it, and don't worry, it's coming. But maybe now that you've watched this video, you'll stand a chance against the big bad day one vets. Good luck! Sup guys, Brotato here. Thanks for watching my video about Call of Duty World War II multiplayer. I'll be sure to do an analysis on zombies and campaign pretty soon. But in the meantime, check out my Black Ops 3 Zombies videos. Anyways guys, that's my time, thanks for watching, and peace.